Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. Today I'm going to be making a Fallout themed dress. If I've timed this right, this video should be going out on the same day that the new Fallout series airs. I've seen the trailers and I'm really excited. I've also been playing through Fallout New Vegas to get me in the mood. And looking at the heavy 50s inspiration for the Fallout universe. The whole thing is like a satirical take on the 50s and fears of nuclear war and how people in the 50s thought the future was going to look like. And it was just crying out for me to make a 1950s style dress but using the colours and stuff of a uh, vault jumpsuit. For my inspiration I actually had a little browse on Stephanie Canada's website Backroom Finds and I found what I thought was the perfect jumping off point. This one was nowhere near my size. I would have a lot of trouble scaling this one but the forms and stuff look quite right for a vault suit. Last time I checked this pattern was still available on Stephanie's website so I will put a link to it in the description. The big thing that drew me towards this pattern was the neckline and the bit going down. It reminded me so much of the sort of yellowy goldy bit on the vault jumpsuit. The one big thing I am going to change is I'm going to give it sleeves if it works, hopefully it does. Um, I've made a pattern for some three quarter length sleeves purely because the vault jumpsuit does have sleeves and I want to kind of keep that element. It remains to be seen whether or not I'm going to try and make a pit boy. That's going to be tricky, I'm not the best at fabricating things. We'll see, I'll give it a go. <laughs> right, without further ado, let's make a start. Okay, so, pattern. I have done this using my block and just looking at a picture of the reference dress. So there's a good chance I've got a lot of the details wrong, but we'll see, we'll see. I'm using it as a reference. Um, so we've got collar pieces. These are gonna be in the yellow. Back piece in blue. front blue and then we've got the little button placket bit that's going to be in yellow. For my sleeve I've done a three quarter sleeve using my block and this little cuff bit is going to be in yellow. I've made it so hopefully there'll be some like little pointy out bits that'll look quite cute. I'm hoping it works, it may not, we shall see. Fabric wise We've got blue and yellow. I do have another thing of blue as well. I am hoping that I have got enough of the blue to do a half circle skirt and use the pattern from the walkaway dress. I'll have to rethink that if I don't have enough fabric though. Uh, I did just pick out what they had in a remnants bin in Abacan. But anyway, um, the yellow, I was fretting a little bit at first thinking that maybe this was a bit too pale but it does look really nice with the shade of blue. I did also get some gold trim to go around the edge of the collar and some gold buttons as well. So yeah this has all been pre-washed so I think it's time to start cutting and speaking of cutting we had a hobby craft open and I got a rotary cutter. I have never used a rotary cutter before. I might lose all my fingers. We shall see. But I am hoping that this little experiment is good and it's comfortable and you never know, it might make some things easier for me. I do often have trouble cutting because my hands can be a bit rubbish sometimes. So yeah, let's give it a go. Right, so We've got a bit of a confusing thing with seam allowance here. This bit doesn't have seam allowance. This bit has got seam allowance on that end, but not that end. 
<laughs> I drew it on, but I just remembered I included the fold over. And then none of the other pieces have got seam allowance. So I'm drawing it on. <laughs> now, this is quite cute. It's got a little candy guard on. There's a little button, so you can't press it. And then this only flips back when you put pressure on, which is quite cool. So let's give it a go. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Mm? So we, we have learnt that I should be going from that side out. So that, that is a lesson. Not bad for a first attempt. I'm quite... I'm quite happy with that. I've missed some lines slightly, but on this bit I've drawn my seam allowance line on anyway. So, yeah, yeah quite clean. Okay, so everything has been overlocked. I did also do some pockets because skirt has to have pockets. I have also made the decision to do a zip going down the back instead of on the side, just because it's gonna be easier. <laughs> and I, I'm also really pleased with how neatly I've managed to overlock this pocket because usually this area causes me problems. I reckon I'll be able to get the skirt done today. I'm doing that first because I made two mistakes. One of them being I shouldn't have sewn these two pieces together just yet on the bodice because it's supposed to have some lace detail sandwiched in between these two pieces. The other thing that I discovered was I'd forgotten about the two pieces that go down the chest area. I haven't got enough of this so I, I also don't really like this. It's a bit scratchy and stuff. I'll, I'll use this and I'll just get some more of it if I absolutely have to but if I can find something a bit nicer than this as well, then I will go with that. Either way, skirt today. So first things first, gonna get the pockets in and then do the side seams. I'm gonna leave the hem till last just because this is a half circle skirt. So it's gonna need time to let it drop and stuff. Okay, so it's actually a couple of days later. I have had a haircut and a treatment because my hair was dead from over bleaching it. But in the meantime, I've done a little bit of sewing. I have had the skirt pieces up over there just hanging because a lot of it is on the bias and I want the hemline to drop. And I have fixed my little mistake with these bits so I need to iron these because 
I did this while needing to pass some time and I didn't have access to an iron or anything. It was just my portable sewing kit. So I need to iron these to this side and I think I'm actually going to do a little bit of top stitching just to secure it to this side. So yeah, that just involved unpicking, taking it apart, inserting the gold bit and then sewing it up again. So that's looking good. Uh, next, um, I need to iron my seam allowance for this bit and then fold over and then I will have my button placket. After that, I can finally serge the bottom of here and then attach it to the skirt. There's not actually going to be that much more to do on the dress after that, apart from the collar. And I have actually got some like EVA foam um, on order that should be arriving in the next like sort of hour or so that I'm going to have a little play with and see if I can make myself a pit boy. I've never used it before, so it is going to be an experiment. So I'm going to get this sewing done and then start fabricating. Okay, so I have got my front pieces. This is going to overlap and I'm gonna have buttons down there. What I'm thinking I'm gonna do, because this isn't going to be functional, uh, there's gonna be a zip in the back. So while I've got these pieces flat, I'm going to do my buttonholes just because it's going to be so much easier. Then I can attach my back pieces on the sides and the shoulder and put the collar on. Then it's going to be attaching the skirt and doing the zip and the hem. Have you ever been just so confidently wrong with something? I planned it out, I did my stitching lines thinking, yep, yeah, I'm going to do it this precise way so that when everything's folded over, it looks really nice and neat. And then you fuck it up. I'm going to show you what I mean. These are my nice stitching lines. This is where I've put the buttonholes. And the way I'd done it, these stitching lines should match up at the overlap. I was supposed to do the buttonholes along the stitching line. So they will be perfectly in the centre. And I didn't. I think because I was thinking about when you do a shirt and you've got your placket and you've got your sti right, stitching line there and then the edge and then you do your buttonhole in the middle and I am now gonna spend the evening unpicking these and correcting them instead of connecting the front to the back and doing the collar like I had planned. So that's fun. <laughs> Mistakes happen, can't be helped. <laughs> okay, so I got grumpy for a bit <laughs> I'm bad about making the mistake and then I spoke to my wonderful other half who reminded me that the button placket doesn't need to properly function so it doesn't matter how thick it is so what I did was I added another piece of fabric over the top with the buttonholes in the correct place and yeah a little bit thicker but it looks good i am happy with this 
Something else that he also pointed out to me quite rightly was that you could see some of the blue a little bit underneath this bit. So I made sure to make the new bit long enough so that it could cover that little bit there. So it just makes it look a little bit neater. So I did that with both sides so that will now overlap like that so what i need to do now is attach these to the skirt well actually no no what i'm going to do next is i'm going to do the collar because it's going to be a lot easier to attach the collar to this like it is now than it is to attach the collar when the skirt's on it because it's going to be a lot more fabric to wrangle under the sewing machine so yeah that is the plan collar first then skirt okay so we have got two pieces there and then we've got another two pieces here the plan is there's fluff everywhere i am going to have this which i got another two meters of so it should be enough this needs to be sandwiched between the two layers so what i need to do is i need to put some there and then have it going around like that I'm probably going to have to snip into this a little bit just to help it bend round more. But should have enough to get round both of these. And yeah, once it's sandwiched in there, it'll be stitching along there. And then when I turn it the right way round, it'll just be this bit poking out. Same sort of deal as this. Okay, so it's suddenly gone very dark and started sewing it down, which is wonderful because I need to look for the shop. But we have a dress. It's still got quite a bit of finishing to do. And most importantly, I need to put a zip in it so that I can try it on. I'm going to do that off camera because I have learnt over the years that I can do a perfect zip if I'm not filming it. If I am filming it, then I end up with like an inch or two inches difference. So I'm going to do that off camera. And then we're going to take a little break for a bit. Comment if you're one of those people who has multiple projects on at the same time, because I feel like I've got like seven on right now. <laughs> but yes, I think... Other than finishing, I need to do a belt and then I... Bought some foam, I'm going to have a go at doing a pit boy. I have done some foam fabrication before, once. <laughs> uh, this was the result. I was very, very pleased with it, although it didn't fit the person I made it for. It was a little bit too big. But from that, I learned a lot about using like contact cement and foam and stuff. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed we will have an outfit by the end.
Right, I can't remember how much I talked about last time I recorded. Um, because, yay, I got ill again. Um, and I ended up just kind of working on it. Um, but yeah, been making a lot of use out of this foam as well as the thinner foam. And I first of all made this one, but it was too big and I didn't like how kind of lopsided it was and wasn't happy. So I made this one. This one does fit together a lot neater. It's still some little gaps, but you know what? It can't be perfect. <laughs> Um, this is only like my, but it's my first time using EVA foam, second time using craft foam. So, but yeah, the back is basically done. Uh, got these little details on here. This wire is from an old phone charger that didn't work anymore. Picked up some cheap hinges uh, and got this little lock here so yeah this just opens like that and then inside we've got the structure I ran some card along the inside edges that way it wouldn't have the same issues with this of it kind of bowing out and ended up not being straight and stuff I was able to use these as a guide to actually get it straight and these little bits on the inside here are to kind of brace it and help it hold its shape. So, what I need to do now is work on the front. Now, the front is going to be interesting because not only do I have to work around this, I need to build up this area so this is a bit more flush. It also kind of comes up and then out and then down like that and I don't have a heat gun so I'm not going to be able to mould the foam into that shape. For that I am going to use cardboard and I'm going to get my kind of basic shape like that out of the card and then I'm going to kind of fill in any hollow areas then I can use the foam to build up the actual details on it and get the screen on and the little bits and bobs speaking of bits and bobs I am really proud of this this bit is just a, I think it's two layers of the EVA foam and then a top layer of the craft foam that's just kind of squeezed around it. This, the inside of it is actually a spool of thread, <laughs> like an old one that like I didn't have any thread on it anymore. And I just wrapped it up in like layers of the craft foam and I think that looks pretty good. <laughs> uh, the little spider webs and stuff on this um, I will be clearing up before I actually spray paint it. Um, I was going to use contact cement, but the smell was getting to me a bit. Um, I think sometimes I'm in the mood to be able to deal with things like that. Like the, I had the respirator on, but I, I could still smell it. <laughs> like even though there was a good seal on it, it's just it, it was still irritating me. Um, sometimes I'm just hypersensitive. Um, can't be helped. So that is why I'm using hot glue uh, and I don't mind the roughness of this because once it's painted I can make these bits kind of rusty and stuff and make it look like the like welds and like little imperfections that are supposed to be there so that should be good. Right I think it's time to start messing about with some cardboard.
Right, I have got this stuck down. I've got some hollow areas here and here, which I need to fill in. So I am going to do that, and as well as fill in some of the details around here. And then I will get back to you when it's time to put this screen on. Please ignore my hair looking horrible and gross uh, because I'm going to be bleaching it and dyeing it later today. So there's a reason. <laughs> um, but I stayed up until about two in the morning last night doing this. I am so happy with how this is looking. What I need to do now though is I need to do a screen for the front. At this point the battery on my mic died but I was basically saying that I was going to use black fabric with plastic over it and then multiple layers of EVA foam for the bezel. Okay, so I've done a little bit of painting on it. I am bloody pleased with this. So yeah, I just need to wait for this to properly dry, maybe do a couple more layers of the brown, uh, but then it is done. So I think next thing you will be seeing is the reveal. I am so unbelievably pleased with how this has turned out. It's so much fun. I love the colours. It looks super pretty. Like the shape of the dress is so flattering as well. I really, really like it. I did say that I would like to be able to wear this dress as just a regular dress. But now that it's on, I do feel maybe it's a bit much. I might get some looks out in public in this. Uh, so I think maybe a con or something will be more appropriate than in town. <laughs> I will probably also look into getting some different shoes because as pretty as these are, they are not shoes for walking in. They are strictly shoes for posing in. The dress itself was reasonably straightforward to make. Uh, I only ran into a few little issues around the collar, for example, getting it to kind of lay flat. Um, and also the trim. Um, it wanted to do some stupid things around the corners. Um, I think if I was going to do anything like this again in future, I've definitely learned some lessons there, which is great. This shape of dress though is definitely something that I would like to do again in the future because I do think it looks really, really pretty. The thing that I am most proud of though is this bad boy. <laughs> Considering this was my first time using EVA foam, I am really pleased with how this has turned out. Again, lessons have been learned. One of them being, I would like to use EVA foam again. I do still have a little bit left. Investing in a heat gun. That way I don't have to have the 
cardboard on the inside to make it keep its shape because that ended up leaving some marks on my arm and digging in a little bit so that's something that I would change uh, I'm really happy with how the weathering went and stuff that's really good another thing would be layering up making it look like it's one coherent piece rather than lots of little pieces put together I'm not too bothered with how the hot glue gun ended up working with this it does end up kind of making it look like welds albeit not very good welds maybe some done by someone who was learning um i think if i did this again i would use contact cement definitely um find some outdoor space where i can use the contact cement where the smell's not going to be as bleh. <laughs> another thing i would change is this I put it in the middle purely for stability reasons. On the actual reference, it's more off to the side, but I found that putting it to the side, I had lots of gaping on this side, so I had to put it in the middle. This ended up causing issues design wise because this bit is supposed to be in line with the screen. I did do my best to build it up. I cut out a little section inside for this bit to slot into. But what I didn't take into consideration is that now I've got this bit in the way. So it's not got as much range of motion as it should have in order to do a quick lock. I've got to kind of squeeze it together and manipulate it in. It does work, but it's just a little bit more fiddly. So that's something to change for future. The other thing that would be good to have a go at at some point would be to put some electronic components in it because at the moment it has a broken screen. It would be nice at some point to make one where it's like an LED like screen um, with like light, green light coming through sort of thing so it looks like it does actually work. I have seen people make them where they put their phone in so it's actually usable but my phone is just too wide for this to work. I would have to find another phone with a smaller screen um, and I'm just not sure if I'm willing to commit that much at this stage. <laughs> But yeah, having a go with like putting some little like working LEDs in and stuff, that would be fun to play around with. Overall, I do think that this project has been a huge success. I am so pleased with it. Um, one thing that I didn't actually mention um, in the making of is the number. I did put a poll up on whether to have the number on my back or as a little brooch and most people like by an overwhelming margin chose a little badge. I did it fault number 21 which in my game of Fallout New Vegas is the vault number that's on my character's back. Uh, also having a little look through the different vaults it seems like maybe fault 21 is one that I want to be in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I have enjoyed making this. It's been so much fun. I'd like to give a big shout out to Elaine Bai, who has been a constant supporter of this channel and I really really appreciate your support so much even when I've been on like a big hiatus like you've still supported me. Thank you so much. If you would like to support me, I do have a coffee page. Anything donated there helps towards this channel. It goes on things like fabric, cotton, um, little gadgets here and there to help make things look better. So the link is in the description if you would like to support me there. Also, if you like how this dress has turned out, I did check and the pattern on Stephanie Canada's website, Backroom Finds, is still available. It is in a bust 32, I believe. So if you want to make your own version of this, then go to her website, buy the pattern. Thank you very, very much for watching. Doing all the youtube -y things will be very much appreciated. Like, comment, share, and I will see you next time. Bye!